Hi, welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WebPixel, and we'd like to thank Inon or Inon for sponsoring this episode. Inon do a wide range of strobes, ports, um, wet ports, um, arms, and accessories. Um, so please head on over to inon.jp and check out what they do. Um, I'm very happy to be joined by Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Good to see you, Adam. I see you too. Um, as always, um, and I thought we obviously talked about lots of topics to do with uh, exposure on WebPixel Live. I thought I'd ask Alex which metering mode he uses when he's shooting <laughs> underwater. Well, I, you know, to, to, I guess the, the, the slightly flippant, but with a lot of truth article answer to that is, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> um, which I'll, I'll probably come back to in a minute. But I, I, well, I guess the metering mode I use is my, are my eyes and the, the, the screen on the back. Um, so most cameras, I think we should backtrack and I'll come yeah. back to why I'm making such a flippant opening remark. Most cameras have a variety of metering modes and it's quite common that they have three, but some have differently. They usually have a spot metering mode, yep. a center weighted metering mode and a, a, a matrix or a valuative or, or, or you know, or basically a whole scene metering, meet, meet, metering mode. And you can change between those three to allow your camera to meter the scene and help you create a picture. Now, the majority of the time as an underwater photographer, I take pictures in manual. So my camera is not making any decisions based on that. It will tell me with a little bar chart or a little graph what my meter is, is what the scene is looking like in terms of that bar chart yep. um, using that metering mode and the meter of the camera. Yep. But am I watching that before every picture? No. Um, and so that's why my answer was slightly flippant. For me, it's it's not that critical with a digital camera. Much better to dial in the settings that you think are right, dial in the settings that you want to use, shoot your pictures, and then adjust from there by engaging your brain and thinking, what can I adjust to keep the look of the picture that I want while also getting the exposure correct? Yep. Um, and so, you know, for example, if you're shooting macro, with a, a flash lit picture with a black background, your metering mode is no use to you. Yep. If you're shooting a, a wide angle picture again with a reef with a blue water background, yes, that metering mode can tell you about that blue water. However, I think it's easier to judge where that blue water should be in terms of exposure by looking at the screen rather than trusting the meter because the meter is making a guess of that. The screen is what you actually got. And looking at the screen and making an adjustment is a better mode. So. I know I've not answered the question at all, but to run through the metering modes on the camera, um, the spot metering mode is usually taking a single point on within the picture and taking an accurate meter reading of that. Yeah. Um, it's typically on most cameras where you put the autofocus point, it will take an exposure meter reading. Yeah. Yeah. So for example, if you wanted to shoot a, a balanced light wide angle picture, you could put that spot meter over the blue of part of the picture yeah. frame and take a meter reading, adjust your settings to get that right, yep. and then move that spot back over the reef to focus on the reef to take your photo. That is a lot of palaver. Yes, it is. Yeah. So it, you can use spot metering underwater to meter your blue, but you have to move that spot. I mean, you could do it by recomposing the camera, I guess, um, not having to move the point around, but it seems a lot of palaver. Also, the correct exposure for blue water, as far as the camera is concerned, is not an axe accurate in the middle of the the, the left and right EV histogram. Yep. You actually, if you if you expose water there, it will be too bright. Yep. It'll try and make your water as bright as a bright blue sky, yep. not a nice dark, you know, rich underwater blue. So you, as well as m using this spot meter, you need to adjust away from it, yep. which is why for me, and you, by the time you've done all that, you're better off just taking a picture, looking at the screen, and adjusting from that. Yeah, yeah. So spot metering uses a single point within a picture to make a correct exposure get, um, estimate for that picture. And you can use that and you, you, you know, um, center weighted is using a much larger part of the picture, but it's based around a central arc of the image yeah. on some cameras that does move with the autofocus point. So if you move the autofocus point off center, but it, it uses a kind of a 75% central area of the picture. Yeah. And on a lot of cameras in the custom settings, you can change how big that area is. Yeah. What it's good for is it's designed for people photography. So if you're taking a mug shot of a person um, and it, it will do a good job of, of saying, right, ignore the background, 
put your attention on the people yep. in the picture and make an exposure for that. Yep. Um, and um, and so on. The final mode is the evaluative or matrix metering, which turns on the exposure metering across the whole picture, but then uses clever um, it uses clever electronics Algorithm, to yeah. determine what the best exposure is based on a number of, of preset, pre-expected types of pictures. So the camera will use its meter and say, okay, this looks like a portrait of a person. It may use face recognition to say, yeah, there's a person in the picture. Therefore, prioritize the face in the exposure mm. and it will adjust the auto exposure to do that. Mm. Um, none of those presets in the camera are expecting a coral reef or a shark or a turtle. So the matrix meeting is unlikely to guess well in that situation. Okay. Also, you can imagine two wide angle pictures. One, where the whole scene is almost certainly full of, of soft corals and reef and sea fans. And there's a small slither of blue down the side that you need to correctly expose with, the, with your, your metering system. Alternatively, you can have another picture where you have a very small soft coral in the corner of the picture and a massive expanse of blue. blue yeah. And you want those, that blue to be the same exposure in both which if you're on the same dive shooting in the same direction, will be the same combination of shutter speed and aperture. The camera will really struggle with a metering system to realize that you want that blue the same. Yep. And for all those reasons, you can, you know, I've described the, three, the, the metering modes, all of them will struggle with underwater pictures a lot of the time. Yep. And so in, in all those cases, certainly shooting photos with flash underwater, when your camera's in manual, the metering mode doesn't matter. The time you may find it useful is when shooting available light underwater, yep. where you, you you don't want to take a photo without checking the picture, or it's very, very bright, and you can't see the LCD screen. If you've ever tried to shoot pictures in the shallows on a bright tropical, you know, off a, off a white sand, bright tropical beach, it can be really hard to see the LCD screen. And in those situations, maybe you do need a reliable metering mode and to trust the camera to do things for you. Um, but I would say, in general terms, um, in underwater photography, I don't care what I use. The mode that I leave my camera set on is matrix metering. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I think the, the good thing about sticking with one metering mode is you get good at, if you are using an automatic mode, whether that's um, AV or A, aperture priority, whether that's TV or S, shutter priority, or whether you're using maybe manual settings, but with auto ISO, yeah. keeping, keeping with the same metering mode um, for the picture, gives you a predictability on how your camera is going to guess. Yep. And so if you need to dial in some exposure compensation, so in typically underwater, if we're shooting available light of big animals and we're not shooting with flash guns, we may well shoot auto ISO. We may well shoot um, AV, A or TV or S modes on our cameras to, to get those shots. Yep. Um, but we normally need to dial in some underexposure to stop the, the blue water ending up like blue sky of somewhere around minus... 0 0.7 to maybe minus 1.3 um, EV yeah. um, to get a good blue. And the reason I like to stick with the same metering mode is I get used to with my cameras predicting how it will guess. And I basically set, can then set a consistent offset from that with the EV that yeah, gives me reliable want. metering modes. Yeah. And I think if you're switching between spot and center and, and matrix all the time, you're going to confuse the camera. I so think, I yeah, think I'm a big sorry. It may be worth um, having a we, we Alex and I did a video about the various um, different uh, exposure modes. So so program mm. aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual modes um, previously. So maybe worth having a look at that in conjunction with this. And um, I, I was going to pick up on something that you mentioned, Alex, about using Eyeball Mark One to determine your exposure on the LCD yeah, screen. In my rat, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> all right, um, and and I, I I kind of something else that I think maybe is is a lot of people get very um, involved with looking at histograms on screens of cameras and using a histogram to determine exposure. Um, and whilst that can have utility, and obviously it works for some people, personally, I tend not to have the histograms on. Um, and, and like you, Alex, I tend to be able to look at the screen and, and figure out whether I've clipped the highlights or, 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 or destroyed the shadows. So, so I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of much more, I do use the actual review screen um, to determine how my exposure looks rather than histograms. But um, there are occasions when, I mean, I, I might turn a histogram on. Um, an example of this is, again, as you mentioned, it's shooting into very bright light. It's very easy, you know, to, to inadvertently clip the highlights when you're shooting into the bright light because it's hard. You're looking into bright light, your eyes get 
get blinded by the bright light and then you can't really see what's in the monitor but in general yeah i look at look at what i've got on the screen and, and adjust my exposure from that yeah yeah, yeah same as when you're in a cave you know yeah. in a cave it's very dark you could it's very easy to underexpose in that situation because the screen looks so bright suddenly mm. because you, you're in the dark and your lcd screen is incredibly bright mm. in those conditions I, I actually remember a talk that i think you and you and martin did at one of the dive shows um where you were talking about that one of your adjustments, and this may be old news, was actually to adjust screen brightness. Do you still adjust screen brightness or not? I was actually going to suggest we did a whole episode on that. Actually, okay. to up <laughs> there we are. That's that'll be that'll be. So you'll have to watch the next episode to get that bit of information. Yeah, yeah. So um, screen brightness is. I, I think there's quite a lot to say about it. That's why. Yeah, yeah. So, so the short answer is that um, metering modes. Eyeball mark. Eyeball mark <laughs> one. Yeah, excellent. Um, it's the best metering mode. So, so I happen to know that Alex has been diving recently. So, so have we got anything on Instagram yet, Alex? Um, I will try and get something up so so that when people watch this, they can go and see something from my my recent trip to Scotland. Yes, fantastic. Okay, it was great to do. Like it's the first time for a very long time that I've done diving one day and then gone diving again the next day as well, which was really nice just to get into that groove. Right, I'm here to dive yeah. and to get stuck in. And although it was it was very cold because it was it was the, the unseasonably cold winter this year and the sea is a couple of degrees colder than normal. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, full of life. We had good visibility um, for that part of the world. And, yeah, it was a really enjoyable trip. Well, that's fantastic. So we look forward to seeing the results at Alex Mustard one on Instagram. But again, if you search for Alex, you'll find him. So thank you very much. Um, and thanks again to in on or iron on for sponsoring this episode and um, we really appreciate the support our sponsors give us and um, thank you all for watching please feel free to add any comments or suggestions in the comment section and drop us a like if you enjoyed it thank you very much i look forward to seeing you again soon